we've talked about condensation at the surface, and we've talked about um, dew point as part of that condensation at the surface. Now we're going to talk about condensation that is near the surface, but above the surface, and in terms of fog. And fog is um, usually formed in two different ways, and it is usually formed by either a cool surface or a warm surface. The cool surface is called a cooling fog, and the warm surface produces an evaporative fog. So let's explore the two of them. This is a cool fog, and this is an evaporative fog. This is a cool surface here and a cooling fog. This is a warm surface here, like a warm swimming pool in, on a fall morning, and an evaporative fog. You've seen both kinds. Let's explore them. You know in the relative humidity calculation that we had that it's all about humidity in the air. And you know that on the numerator, we had the actual vapor pressure. And in the denominator, we had the saturation vapor pressure. And we went over the fact that if you want to increase humidity, and fog is basically increased humidity above the surface, then you could, you could go about increasing that humidity in one of two ways. You could increase the actual vapor pressure. Remember, dump more vapor into the area where you're at. And that would increase your humidity, and that might produce a fog when you've got the dew point right at the air temperature. Or you could decrease the denominator. You could decrease the saturation vapor pressure. And by decreasing the denominator, you would increase the humidity, the answer to our equation there. In this case, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about the saturation vapor pressure part of the equation first. Now, if you want to decrease the denominator and decrease the saturation vapor pressure, remember, you're basically decreasing the temperature. Remember our graph? We looked at temperature on the x-axis, and we looked at vapor pressure on the y-axis. If you want to decrease vapor pressure, you decrease the temperature. So we're basically talking about cooling fogs here. Let's talk about that first. There are three types of cooling fogs. There is a radiation or a valley fog right here. There's an advection fog, like you might see in San Francisco. And there are upslope fogs, which you might see in the Great Smoky Mountains or in the Rocky Mountains, especially on the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains. Let's go into why those are all, what cooling fogs are and why these are cooling fogs. So a cooling fog is a, um, a fog that has a um, radiational basis to it. And the radiational basis was that overnight, the soil and the surface emitted infrared. And in emitting all of its infrared, it cooled the surface. So that we talked about black bodies and we talked about black asphalt and how it's so hot in the afternoon. But by dawn, it feels so cool. You could easily walk. In fact, you have to get, it would feel cold under your feet by dawn because it emits out so much overnight, as much as it took in. Same way here. Um, this is emitting overnight and it is cooling the ground. When the ground cools, the air above it, just above it, just above the ground, um, will also cool and it might cool to the saturation vapor pressure of the air. If it does, that vapor will condense and it will form a fog. Now that radiation had gone up from the ground and it had warmed the area above. So just like I showed you in our meeting session on Thursday, when you have warm air above cool air, nothing moves. And you basically have a lid on top of your cool air. You have a lid here on top of your cool condensed air. You have a lid here on top of your fog deck. OK? 
okay? If a lit, this is warmer air up here. This cannot move because it can't be buoyant because it's cooler than the air above it that is warmer. The air above it got warm because of all that radiation that was coming off and cooling the land. Let's explain it in a different way so you can really get it into your head. I want you to look at this drawing at dusk and it has a sounding with it. Remember the sounding is red for temperature and this temperature at the surface at dusk is at about 18 degrees Celsius. Remember the green line is the dew point temperature. In this case there's a big difference between the air temperature and the dew point. There's no condensation at all. At 2 a.m. the ground has been emitting and emitting and emitting all of its infrared energy and guess what? That temperature came down, way down. It was at about 18 degrees Celsius way out here. That temperature at the surface went way down to about 7, 8 degrees Celsius. When it did that, it met the dew point. The red and the green met. When the temperature met the dew point, there's condensation. And not only is there condensation right here where they meet, but the other part of this is you see a, a, an inversion where the temperature is getting warmer as you climb into the atmosphere. So that puts a lid on this condensation down here. Let's go to 4 a.m. Things get a little thicker outside and for a very different, for a very specific reason. As this fog starts to really thicken in the cool air, it also starts to emit back down to the earth. Because remember, when you condense, you're releasing energy to the environment. There's a play here between the coolness of the air and the latent energy that's being released when it condenses. What happens here is that this thick area starts to we it starts to radiate back down to the earth because remember everything radiates at all times 24 7. That radiation back down effectively stabilizes the temperature at the surface. But remember everything radiates all the time. So the top of the, um, the fog deck radiates too. And the top of the fog deck radiates straight up to space. And in doing that, it cools the top of the cloud deck. And in doing that, that area can, be, can meet the saturation vapor pressure and you could have more fog forming there. So you can see how the cloud deck can increase in height due to the radiation cooling at the surface that goes directly into space. Look over that if you need to. That's how a very thick cloud deck, cloud deck can form. Before we go into some pictures of some really thick cloud, cloud decks, I want to show you one thing. This is a picture. It's not a great picture, but it's very cool if you understand what you're looking at. Here is low fog right here. It's over a football field. You might be able to see the soccer um, post there. It's over a cool field that really cooled overnight. So the fog is low because the field cooled so much and the air around the fog, the, around the field cooled as well. The fog here is higher. It is over a warmer parking lot so that the parking lot is still warm. It hasn't emitted everything off yet. It still keeps the air right above it a little bit warmer it keeps that air right above it a little bit warmer, just above the saturation vapor pressure temperature, so that air doesn't condense. Then you go up just a bit with altitude, and there it hits the cooler air with altitude, and it condenses there. So radiational fog is tough, but you have to really think about what is happening overnight and the surfaces you've got. The grass will radiate and get quite cool. The parking lot should get cool as well, but look, you've got lots of cars here that warmed it up. So these cars came in and they warmed it up with their, um, with their uh, warm engines and 
And otherwise, I bet that fog would have been very nice and low right over the um, empty parking lot. So I hope that helps you out to understand that a bit. And I wanted to talk to you about another type of cooling fog, which is advection fog. Vecto vectore in Latin means wind, and this is carried on the wind. These are the very thick fogs in San Francisco. And what they do is that they will pick up mild, warmer air out in the Pacific, then come across a very cool current right next to the coast of California and chill. And when they chill over that cool current, the wind drives them right into the San Francisco Bay. That is called an advection, a wind fog that cooled over a cooler surface. Let me show you a bit more about that. Um, this is the cooling current that is off of the coast of California. We're going to study this soon. It's actually a uh, process called upwelling that we'll get to. But the warmer water is out here. There is vapor formation over the warmer water. It travels in on, an, on a um, sea breeze. It comes in across the cooler current. That chilly air cools the vapor and sends a fog right in. These fogs can get incredibly thick. I ran into one in January in California that um, um, actually delayed our flight by about two hours. Another type of cooling fog is an upslope fog. They're beautiful. You see them in the Great Smoky Mountains. You see them on the east coast of the Rockies. And what you find is that moist air will lift against a topo topographical barrier. We're going to learn a little bit more about why that happens. But remember, moist air is more buoyant, so it will find it easy to lift. And as it lifts against this mountain barrier, It'll get cool with the altitude and condense. So up, upslope fogs are common as well. You have three types of coolant fogs, radiational coolants, advection, and upslope fogs. There is also another way to produce a fog. We can just load up the actual vapor pressure above the air, and that will produce a fog as well. That will increase the humidity of the air. That is an evaporative fog. So I am increasing the um, vapor pressure by evaporating more off of this warm surface. And you noted that a heated pool in winter, hot springs, you have a warm surface and you have cold, dry air above it. The warm surface evaporates the fog, it lifts, starts mixing, as you remember from our lab, when we had cold air above warm, there's lots of nice slow mixing in there. And when that mixes, that warm parcel can meet its saturation vapor pressure and the dew point and condense and form the fog of right above it. We're talking about super saturation that condenses. Remember the the mousse blowing out and it instantly condensed after super saturation. Same thing with the geyser. These are geysers at Yellowstone. Very, very, very hot down here. Much cooler air up here. Evaporation, mixing, and meets the dew point. This is a map that shows you where different types of fogs are. Um, like we mentioned, advection fog, really big in California. Um, upslope fog, really big in um, the east coast of the Rockies, also in the Great Smoky Mountain areas. Um, what we tend to notice up in, um, up in New England in the valleys are um, radiation fogs. So I hope that helps you, and I'll see you on the other side.